Good morning, everyone. You didn't expect to see me up here this morning, did you? But here I am. I've been asked to teach the class. Uh, Michael is sick. You know, his wife was has COVID, and he's not feeling very well. It's best that he stay home today. We're going to be talking about Jonah here in just a moment. Get some of your thoughts. Remember, this is a class. I'm only preach, uh, standing up here so I can work my, my buttons up here. I've asked Terry Jones, if he would, to start us off with prayer this morning. Terry? Let's pray. Dear God in heaven, we're so thankful for this opportunity we have on this Lord's Day to come and worship thee. We pray that you give us to keep the strength to get through the class and that we can learn and grow better Christians and help each other get to heaven. We continue to pray for those who are sick, dear God, and out. We pray that they get well and be back with us. We pray, dear God, to be with those who have lost loved ones or mourning, to be with them and comfort them at this time. Help us to know what we can do for the folks that are sick and those who are mourning, dear God. Help us always look to thee for strength and guidance in all we do. Continue to be with us through the rest of the service today. Everything we do here be pleasing to thee. Again, dear God, we thank you so much for sending Jesus to die on the cross for our sins so we might have that hope of heaven someday. Help us to not fall into the evil ways of this world and be tempted by this world, but to stay strong in your word and help each other. We ask these saying in Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> so challenge y'all just a little bit talking about Jonah. What are your first thoughts when you hear the name Jonah? Is this too loud? You're in good shape. What do we think about when we hear the name Jonah? Running the other way. Was he a prophet? He ran the other way. What else do you think about when you think about Jonah? There's more than that. Huh? Oh, stubborn. Was he kind of, did he puff up like an old to, a toad and, and get mad at the end there? Sit under a tree kind of thing? Showed emotion. Showed emotion. Seemed to ask some prejudice. <laughs> Nobody's mentioned the big fish yet. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> so we always say Jonah and the whale, right or wrong? Who said that? <laughs> is that is that necessarily right, Miss Myrna? Myrna? No. We always say the big well, don't we? We don't really know. What did God do? He prepared a a great fish for Jonah. And how long was he in the belly? Three. Okay. Three. Where did he flee to? Where did he flee to? He was asked to go to, but he got on a boat in Joppa and headed west in the Mediterranean Sea and headed somewhere south in Spain, according to what I read this morning. Tarshish. Tarshish. <laughs> That's a hard one to say. He went to Tar He was trying to go to Tarshish. Something happened during that time, right? Was there a storm? People got nervous. He was sleeping. I wish I could sleep that well at night. I've been up since 2.30 this morning. I just want you to know that. They cast lots. All this coming to you? He says, do what to me? Toss me over. Did they? How did he get in the big fish if they had none? Right? So all this goes, and he finally goes to Nineveh. I don't have a map. But you know where Galilee, uh, the Sea of Galilee is? Got to go way north and way east in Assyria. The serious good or bad people? Bad people, right? Okay. So I'm not going to go. I hate these folk. Have I got it right so far? I'm afraid they might listen and do. And did they? They did. 
And that's why he puffed up. We're going to take a little bit of a different route than that. I'm glad that y'all understand and know that story. My favorite part of Jonah is a sermon can be about one sentence long. Well, we can be done here real quickly. <laughs> Start singing, I suppose. Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. If you want to turn to your Bible, you can. I'll read just this one. We're not going to go through every, every verse. This, this is a lesson that we can learn from Jonah, apply it to our life, and see what we can do to be a better follower of God, Christian, in our daily walk. Follow with me. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Rise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come upon or come up before me. But Jonah, oops, but Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So he went down to Joppa, thank you, found a ship which was going to Tarshish, paid the fare, and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. How many of us can hide from the presence of the Lord? We might can hide from people. Boy, did I just tear it up or what? <laughs> Thank you. None of us can hide. That should be our first point, right? We can't hide. So, what are some of the facts that I have right here before you? God spoke a command. What did Jonah do about that command? Turn tail and go the other way, right? It wasn't a matter of confusion. <laughs> there you go. It wasn't confusion. He says, you go. And his emotions come into play. I don't like them. I want them dead. I'm going to head out of town. I'm going to flee as far as I can go. Didn't work, did it? Jonah heard and wasn't misunderstood. There was no doubt of the command. Go and tell them. The task was distasteful to Jonah. Can you imagine that? Going to Nineveh, an Assyrian country, a, a city that hated the Israelites, and you go and talk to them because of their wickedness? I would be a little fearful myself, wouldn't you? <laughs> Jonah hated the Assyrians and he fled. Any thoughts or comments on that? Hey, okay. Sorry. About being away from the presence of the Lord. You know, I can't think of anything worse than being away from the presence of the Lord. When you when I think of, of, of what hell is like, I think of I think of hell, you know, you think of fire and brimstone, but I think about being away from the presence of the Lord. And uh, I can't think of anything that would be worse. And so I'm sure that was You know, he had plenty of time to think while he was in the belly of the fish, didn't he? The duty was clear. Go, talk to him. It is difficult because of the situation. Didn't want to do it. Don't like him. They didn't want to be dead. He wants them dead. And maybe to that point, not just to go talk to them, but the Assyrians were known as a cruel, barbaric people and how they treated them. So you go into their capital and say something they don't like, what might happen to you? Well, he might be dead himself. <laughs> right. He tried to evade it. didn't happen. Do we not also do the same thing? Does that hit us? Do we avoid opportunities? No, because my reasonings are justified. <laughs> yes, my reasonings are justified. Sometimes, you know, I'm weak at that. I'm very weak. 
at putting forth and helping people and asking them questions. Studying and talking to people about the Bible. You might make mention of it. Make, sometimes it's slow steps. Sometimes some are willing, some are not. But we all have an obligation and a duty to bring it out. Our duty is clear, just like His was, right? Go and preach. Our duty is difficult sometimes. It's good to study with this group that's confined and we think the same thing. This is why we need to make an effort. And lots of times we evade our duty. Anybody disagree with that? <laughs> you know, a lot of times, Keith, we, we live our lives around people and, and how we live our lives around those folks is, is how much we can talk to them about the Scripture. You know, that's a good example, point, Terry. For example, in everything we do, we're around someone that, even if someone that is a Christian and is struggling in an area, which we all struggle with something, if, if your example in your life is not in a godly manner and patience and whatever it is then you're not going to be able to talk to that person because they're going to question your life so they're going to question you and you're not going to get the first place so our, our example is it's clear and we can't run away from it. it's like everybody said we can't run away from God and what he tells us to do you don't necessarily always have to teach by word of mouth you can teach by your example can't you I have no doubt, Terry, when you were working, that people knew who you were, what you stood for. And people appreciated that. And I think that of most everybody here where you work. I know it was where I worked. They kind of look up to you and recognize and realize that you think about God and all that you do. That, in a way, is an example and a teaching method. But we can always talk to people also. What do these verses say right here? All that we're commanded to do. Luke 17.10 What does it say? Jesus is talking to the unworthy servants. You only have one duty to do. Be worthy. Go out and do it. Luke 17.10 1 John 4, 7 through 12. There's a lot of verses there. Does anybody want to turn over there and read that, or do you have the gist of it? 1 John 4, 7 through 12. Is it talking about God and? Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. And he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. Verse 10, Herein is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us, and sent His Son to be the appreciation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time if we love one another. God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Thank you, Terry. <clears throat> love, 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 love. Do you love each other? I know I love my wife, my grandsons, my sons, my daughters in law. Every one of you, surely you recognize that, right? Do you love each other all the time? God loved us so much. Christ loved us so much that He died such a terrible death that we might be able to be with Him one day. That is love. Okay, John 15, 17. Love one another. Kind of the same idea that, that Terry was saying. Ooh, this one here is tough. What does Luke 6, 27 say? Somebody? And then 35. Do I need to point or anybody? Luke 6, 27, and then verse 35. I've got 27. But yeah. I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. Anybody want to read 35? 35, but love your enemies and do good and lend 
expecting nothing in return, your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. Wowzer. And you will be kind to the ungrateful and the evil. That's a tough one. I have no problem loving each and every one of you. You have no problem loving me. I have a difficult time loving those that don't like me very well. Do you really do you have that problem? We're supposed to love them. We can talk to them. It's a tough one. It's a commandment and we need to do it. Work on those things. You know, just like Jonah. Well, he didn't want to go. Did he say he hated them? Did he say he doesn't like them? He doesn't want to do it. He wants them dead? You think that's love? <laughs> no. But he went anyway. How difficult was that for him? He didn't even give him the Hallmark card of cinnamon. <laughs> I love it. Right. Much less his action. Right. And he did it. He had to be prodded a little bit. Don't we have to be prodded a little bit? point y'all. Joe David. So verse 2, the end of verse 2 that you started out with in John chapter 1, their wickedness had come up before God. The love that they needed from Jonah was not a warm, cozy feeling of hugs. It was the message that they needed to repent, for God was going to do to that nation the same he was going to do to any nation whose sins and actions were evil and wicked before him. Very good. That same principle is the love that we have to have. Yes, we need to have a kind, caring attitude towards individuals, absolutely. But if it's not fulfilled in teaching them the message that will save their soul, then what love have we shown? Right. Right. Good point, Joe. It's difficult. That's what they did. Yeah. They repented, at least for a time. For a season, yeah. It did some good. And that's our responsibility too, to go to them out of love and show the error of their ways. And brethren, sometimes that is not easy to do. Good points, everybody. Any final thoughts before the next one? I well, like in this last verse on this side you had, love is a, it's a long-term investment. But they talked about you show love to people, they may give you nothing back lending money or your goods or your time or your energy or your teaching then they may show you nothing in return we usually want an immediate gratification the reward is great but that's from god eternally down the road good points everybody excellent points our duty is to worship god John 4, 24, God is a spirit, and those of us, or they that worship Him, must do what? Worship Him in spirit and truth. Here in just about 40 minutes, we're going to start our worship. Do we recognize what we're about to do at 10 o'clock? Are we going to be worshiping Him in spirit and in truth? Sing with the understanding. Give from the heart. Pray with the understanding. 
These are our responsibilities as a Christian, as a child of God, to do these very things. 1 Corinthians 16.2 Upon the first day of the week we are to lay by, right? Lay by in store as we have prospered. For those of us who have prospered, (laughs) have we felt that in our Spirit and truth to do that? To give today? Revelations 4, verse 17. You can turn over there and look at it. But it says, Fear God and give Him the glory. Fear God and give Him the glory. Does fearing God mean that I've got to go hide in a closet, hide under the bed, run away, from Nineveh, Did I, have I got the wrong verse? Oh, what's going on? I'm afraid to do something. It might all go away. <laughs> Is it all good now? Where was I? <laughs> Fear God. Does that mean respect God? Can we use that word instead? To love Him enough? To recognize that He is the one and only, the true God. To love Him. To worship Him in spirit and in truth. Revelation 22.9 Worship God. Worship God. Thoughts, questions, ideas, something I may have missed, something more to add, something to take away from. What was Jonah supposed to do? Go deliver a message. (laughs) Go deliver a message. What are we supposed to do? Same thing. What happened in Acts chapter 2? I got to tie my shoe while y'all are talking. What happened in Acts chapter 2? That's not on the board there, is it? What happened in Acts chapter 2? I can't hear you, Carol Joy. <laughs> Holy Spirit came upon them. They started speaking in tongues. Everybody was there in Jerusalem for the Pentecost. They were told to stay around until the Spirit comes. And this is when the kingdom is established. The church is, the church is established right there. Can we agree with that? And as time goes on and they start preaching the Word of God, what do some of the people do? Are they all happy about it? Persecution. And so the church is then spread abroad, isn't it? So in Acts chapter 8, verse 4, they went everywhere teaching the Word of God. Can you see the wonderful design of spreading the Word of God back in those days? Back in that day? 1 Peter 3.15, what does it say to us? Be ready to give an answer with meekness and fear. Some of y'all have excellent, excellent memories. I struggle with remembering verses. Should that prevent me from teaching? Should I still be ready to give an answer? Simple questions, simple thoughts. What might my answer be sometime? Uh, I don't know, but let me find out. (laughs) Oh man, these things are something else, aren't they? You can go all over the place at this thing. Good point, Lisa Joe. It's all right there. Be ready to give an answer. Hebrews 5.12 Yeehaw. What does it say? Ye have need that you need to be taught again, but really you ought to be
Who is that talking to? You and me. Particularly me. Particularly you. Tell you a story. I was asked yesterday to be ready for class and teach. What was my first thought? <laughs> yeah, except for the nervous blister I'll have here in a few days. Flee like Jonah. Flee like Jonah. Can somebody else do this? Can somebody else step up and do this? I thought that. Sounds familiar. <laughs> And then this morning I get a text at 6 o'clock that says, you're a go. Yeah, at least that's when I really did that. But that's okay. We're up here, we're teaching, we're studying, we're learning together. We ought to be teachers when we come of age. Colossians 3.16, we can teach how? By singing with grace in your hearts to the, to the Lord. When we are singing, I asked the class here the other day when I was teaching in the junior high, high school class. When you're out here singing, do you understand it? Are you singing? Or are you thinking about something else? Schoolwork, football games, where are we going to eat? Stuff like that. It's the one thing, I suppose, maybe other than giving, I guess, praying. Okay, this is one thing. That we can do as a congregation out loud and sing praises to God with the Spirit and with the understanding. Thoughts. <clears throat> Before I lose my voice. Maybe some of the words are kind of hard to understand. Yeah. 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 Anything else? Yes, no. Just kind of tie this back in with your Jonah beginning, as Joe did. You go to chapter 3 when the Lord comes back the second time. We're off and we're, well, I know I need to go do it. i got to come up with some. Of he says, you preach to them the preaching that I bid thee. He has given us. Well, there you the go. message is there. That's right. We just need to take what the Lord says. It's not what I think they need to hear. What the Lord says they need to, we all need to hear. Very good. Carol Joy. Back in 1 Peter 3, where at the end of the verse, you're supposed to do it with meekness and fear. And that fear that Jonah had was the wrong fear. You can fear for your physical life, or you can fear for the greater thing, fearful of God, and you're going to do what he says Ever and ever. Never goes away. Did I do Colossians 4 6 yet? I can't remember. <laughs> yes. Hebrews 10 25. That's a big problem for a lot of us, I think. Do you know what it says without even looking at it? What does it say? As the manner of? What does that mean to us as this congregation? We're here. We're here. We're worshiping. Do I wish others were here? I think 
think as Carol just pointed out, it means hopefully we feel responsibility to one another, but greater than the, we have responsibility to God, and it's His command it, to be here. You know, it's a His His command. If at all possible, as a Christian growing from from young to old, our desire should be working towards the first of the week on Sunday to come together to worship Him in spirit and truth. I understand that sometimes you cannot. Out of sicknesses, call of duty if you will, God will judge those matters. That doesn't change our want to, to be here. Something that, that I think we all work on. The difference there in the verse is forsaking is a purposeful, I choose not to be there. It's a choice, isn't it? I'm like Jonah, I know what I'm supposed to do. I choose to go a different direction. Yeah. I mean, I recognize a lot by reason of health and things like that. Some people can can come for just a little while. I got that. And God will understand that and know that. Do the best that we can. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through it all or not. I thought I might have got done early. Our duty is to grow. 2 Peter 1, 5 through 11. A whole list of things. Add to your faith virtue. To your virtue, knowledge. To your knowledge, I don't have the memory. Temperance. <laughs> it just goes and goes and goes and goes, doesn't it? If we had all of those, we'd have it pretty good, wouldn't we? How do you add to your faith? 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show yourself approved, rightly being able to divide that Word of God. Right? Yes, Miss Lisa Joe. Oh, okay. It's something we actively have to work on. You have to work on it. Is your faith stronger now than it was 10 years ago? Is my faith stronger than it was when I was 19, 20 years old? First coming to Wichita Falls? Brand new, fresh Christian? Do you think my faith was strong or not as strong back then? What as strong was it? I tended to come up with the excuses not to go. 1 Peter 2, 1-12 Desire the sincere milk of the truth, right? Desire the sincere milk of the truth. I drink a lot of milk. I desire the milk. Do I desire the truth as much as I desire the milk? How would you answer that to yourself? Long for the Word. Long for it. Want to get into it. Want to study it. 2 Peter 3.18 To Him be the glory now and forever. 2 Peter 3.18 You grow in grace and knowledge. Don't we? Every one of you had a job, you've had to grow in knowledge. Every one of you that became a Christian are still growing in knowledge. It's never ending. We we won't get it all. We strive to do better. Romans 12, 9 through 21. Wow. A lot of stuff going on. We won't read that. It talks about Christian behavior Christian behavior how do we conduct ourselves outside of worship I think Terry Jones was saying something about that earlier 
How do we conduct ourselves outside of this building? How do we represent Christ church outside of this place to be a proper, proper example? Okay. Thoughts, comments. Can you get away from it? Did Jonah get away from it? Did he think he got away from it? He was asleep. <laughs> hey, I'm good. Life is good. Our duty is clear. Is it difficult sometimes? Is it up to you to do my job? James 4.17, what does it say? Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. That's a good one too, isn't it? What does that mean to you? It's a Bible study. What are you getting out of that statement? I don't know if this is good. I'm going to ask it anyway. Y'all know me. Would it have been a sin if I'd said, no, I don't want to do this today? What do you think about that? You can tell me. <laughs> I can take it. Yes, you have understanding. Yes. No problem. Very good. <clears throat> I'm going to back up to your first point there. I apologize for not being fast enough to find it. <laughs> you have the duty being clear and difficult. That that keeps going. Jonah is that whole issue is not a one and done story. It's a great story. But in Philippians one, this is still going on. And Paul is making the point there to those people. Hey, uh, there's verse 16. There's one guy that's preaching Christ of contention. That would be Jonah. Not sincerely. That would be Jonah. Supposing to add affliction. Jonah wants him killed. This is still going on. But then he says in verse 17, there's others that are preaching out of love. And he goes on to make a point in his case there that the gospel is being preached either way. So since it's the power of the gospel, what Jonah is, is like... They already said, uh, Joe pointed out this one little sentence that no one said was one, you know, very short sermon. That's the power. It's not me as the speaker, whether I'm a man or woman or child or adult or old or young. It's that <coughs> message that is what cuts into people. You know, Hebrews calls it, you know, sharper than a two edged sword that cuts between the, the, the whatever it cuts between a lost that phrase. What's that powerful? Okay, no, let's go with that. Thank you. So that is still going on. And so it went from Jonah and now it goes to Philippians 1. It's still happening for us today. Right. That God has the same intent and we have to get that same lesson. Very good, Gilbert. A lot of good thoughts brought out this morning. I appreciate every one of them. <clears throat> we know it's the right thing to do. We need to do it. Oop. Bell already. Second Corinthians 5.10. This is a scary one too, isn't it? How many of us will escape the judgment? No, not one. <laughs> We're going to all appear before the judgment seat, give an account. Whether it is good or bad or evil. 
That's tough. That is fear, respect for God and His Word. Galatians 6, 7. What does it say? God is not mocked, is He? Whatsoever man is going to sow in his heart, he's going to reap that, isn't he? If we spend our day in evil thoughts and evil things, that's what's going to happen. Eventually, that's all going to be, it's going to be on our mind all the time. Colossians 3, 24 and 25. There's a consequence. Serve God and you're going to receive a reward. If you do wrong, you're going to receive kind of a reward. <laughs> Nothing you're going to want. We're obligated to do right. Romans 14.10 I think I said that a while ago. We're all going to stand before the judgment seat and we're going to give, a, give an account whether it be good or bad. Revelation 22.12 Render to every man our just reward, if you will. How we respond to our duty is revealing. It does it reveal our character as Jonah, as it was to Jonah. 1 John 2.15, we're supposed to love the world. It reveals our heart, our mind and our soul, our Christian walk, if you will. It also reveals our eternal destiny. Matthew 7.21 Not all that says to me, Lord, Lord, <clears throat> will enter to the kingdom of heaven, but those that do the will of my Father then they shall enter in. Almost done. So what is the conclusion? Jonah's duty was, and our duty is. Our duty is clear, isn't it? Our duty is difficult. Will we evade our duty like Jonah did? Did Jonah get away with it? Are we going to get away with it? Are we going to rise up and do our duty? These are difficult things, aren't they? These are riveting things in our heart, in our spirit, in our soul. To draw our conscience into reality that, listen, we got to do better. We have a responsibility to save those that are lost. Any final questions or thoughts before this old man is done? Oh, time that just right. Where did that come from? Thank you all.